So thank you everybody for watching. I'm Sharon Scott and you are watching Let Go and Soar Ministries Worship in the Word Wednesdays. So uh, I want to introduce Jim Reese is to my right. He's our guitar man. And Terry Sue is my, I was going to say my right side lady, but she's actually on my left side, right? Well, that's because that way you're not left out. <laughs> to, yes, that's right. So, uh, and Pastor Wald is right in front of you'll see his hand. And today we are going to worship the Lord in song and praise. And uh, we hope that you'll join us, but we're going to start off with prayer. Father God, thank you. We praise you. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that snow is on the way. It's cold outside, and it's been, it feels like it's been a long time coming, but it really hasn't. Just a month and a half ago, it was in 90s. <laughs> so, Lord, we have four seasons here where we live in Weaverville, and we're grateful for that. Lord, we pray that uh, the earth will get the nourishment it needs to be revitalized. And Lord, we pray that we will get the nourishment we need for revival. We know that you're providing everything we need. It's, it's just a matter of us allowing that spark to happen. So Lord, we praise you, we bless you, and we hope that our worship just sparks joy in your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Having confidence in the Lord is so important. Trust and confidence is so important. song is when we went when we were at the um, adult and teen challenge banquet I think everybody was everybody here was there we heard them sing that song and and um, Benjamin opened it up by telling people everyone has something right now that they just wish God would take action on that there's something that's this way and we really want to see it this way and he said, keep that thing in your mind when you hear this song and listen to the lyrics. And it's just a plea. All of my hope is in the name of Jesus. God, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. That's where our faith lies. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name. addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus
to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression. I speak of Jesus. from the mountains Jesus in the street Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus Shout Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name, your name is power.
prayers often on my mind. The song goes through my mind as my deepest prayer. Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one.
Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We bless you. Lord, we're grateful for this time. It's difficult in many ways, but it is such an honor and a privilege to be alive at this time. It shows that you trust us, Lord, and that sounds strange, but it's the truth. Father, we thank you for creating us for such a time as this. We ask, Lord, that you seal this worship and that it bless your heart and that you bless the discussion to come and the message in jesus name we pray amen amen well, well good afternoon welcome to uh the word part of worship and the word today you heard the uh worship music today i hope it touched your heart open those doors and uh to heaven and let you receive a little bit better it always does for me so let's open with a word of prayer father god we just thank you for another opportunity to come together and thank you for your for your son and the sacrifice that he made thank you jesus thank you for the gift of the holy spirit it lives in all of us and leads us and guides us and directs us and i know that it's been an uh, exciting week for me lord uh really exciting lord and i just have to thank you so much i'm so grateful for answered prayer it uh it was a miracle that's that's all i can say it was a, it was a miracle that that it happened in the, in the way it did and as fast as it did and uh we know that uh, the person involved will be truly blessed. And I think that the Lord, this will, uh, this will uh, kind of lead him and guide him in a, in a closer uh, relationship with you also, which is uh, ultimately our, our final focused goal here on this planet while we're still here. And uh, we all want to be with you someday. We all want everybody to be with you someday. 
So we just uh, thank you for that again, Lord. And we just ask for a covering of favor and blessing over this meeting today and and for the uh, the coming week and the rain and the uh, snow that's on the way. Thank you for that also. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to say praise the Lord. We just paid our property taxes today before we came over the meeting. <laughs> Woo! That is a big deal. Oh, yes, <laughs> when, when the Lord's blessed you with a beautiful home in yeah. California, that can add up to a little bit of money. <laughs> oh. So it's worthy of saying praise the Lord. And, thank, and also, again, I thank him for the way he provided miraculously for us to do that, which I shared in another meeting. Oh, that is wonderful. That's and I would love to hear from Walt of what what uh, happened in his week oh. yeah i'd like to hear about this miracle okay. you mentioned in praying well <laughs> okay it's uh i've been uh working with a uh, uh disabled veteran who is bedridden and uh originally i don't know how long ago a few months ago uh annie Six months ago, maybe, Annie uh, said that there was a gentleman that needed some help setting up a video camera so he could, through his computer, so he could tape his history that he wanted to leave when he leaves. And uh, so Sharon and I both went over, and, and uh, Sharon did most of the work there because I'm not real great at doing those things. So uh, got him all set up and ready to go. I don't think he's ever done anything with it since. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyhow. He had a real uh, serious attitude about uh, the help that he received he was receiving from the VA over the last 32 years, which was practically nothing. Okay, he's, he's, uh, he had a spinal injury in boot camp when he was 17 years old. He was 17 when he, when he joined the Navy, same as me. In fact, he joined about two weeks before I did. We're almost exactly the same age. And uh, 17 years old, got a spinal injury in boot camp. They wanted him to medical medically discharge him there. He talked him out of it because he wanted to stay in the service. And uh, he was in and out of naval hospitals this whole four years in the Navy because of his spinal injury. And he finally got out and uh, started going through life. And he's a real uh, kind of an outgoing, do-it-yourself, independent kind of guy that likes to, you know, he built his own house. He had a big, huge ranch in Missouri with all kinds of farm animals and stuff and he had to clear a forest to build the house and he split the, all the wood that he cleared out of the forest which is almost 40 cords of wood and, and I mean he did all this kind of stuff in his whole life he's a real active guy well meanwhile his spine was getting worse all the time and uh, anyway he ended up uh, pretty much crippled up and then he was uh, kind of in a wheelchair was still functioning in all four of his limbs but not very well but uh, he couldn't his uh, brother took him to the uh, VA hospital one day and he had super high blood pressure I mean really high blood pressure and uh, the doctor says ah you'll get over it oh. not a good thing Wow sent him home three weeks later he had a stroke paralyzed on his complete right side all the way down Be because of the high blood pressure which also put him in that much more of a uh, the vinegar stayed against the VA because the doctor didn't even try to treat it. If they would have given him uh, blood pressure medication, probably never would have had the stroke. Still would have had the spinal problem. But anyway, uh, the VA gave him a disability rating for his spine because it, it did it was it did happen in boot camp, and uh, so he's uh, but he's been bedridden all these for the last uh, almost ten years now. I mean. He has to have help to get out of bed and and, uh, and uh, just to go to the bathroom and take a shower. Seriously. And uh, anyway. Can for himself? Can't do anything. Nope. Can't. Uh, yeah. And he's had, uh, he's had people come and help him occasionally. He has to pay him, of course. His brother is with him a lot, almost every day. He's got a brother here in town and uh, was helping him out a lot. But of course, he's paying his brother to do this. And uh, he's also paying the help that he had to come and help him in the house with cleaning and and uh, cooking and all this type of stuff. And uh, so anyway, about it was it'll be two weeks this coming Friday ago that uh, we went over and we've been trying to talk him into going to the hospital. In fact, the VA when I talked to the VA, 
I was been working with the VA slowly but surely over the last uh, couple months trying to get something set up for him because he wanted that aid and assistance care in the home where they actually pay you more money so that you can hire somebody. And so, the woman who was helping him. Yeah. Oh yeah, he had a he had a, this last girl that was helping him was doing a great job. He was happy with her and everything and she was doing the yard work and everything. And she just stopped and didn't didn't even contact him for two or three weeks. Just stopped and he was without without wow. without a meal and uh without a decent meal anyway because his brother doesn't cook and uh was without any kind of care like in the house for over two days and uh anyway but uh, but it'll be two weeks ago this coming from and she's not come back by the way and she's not going to come back she has other means of uh of uh income and when she got that she just deserted him but uh anyway he went in the hospital. It'll be two weeks. It's coming Friday. We finally got him talked into it. It was uh, his brother couldn't talk him into it, We're, and I I couldn't talk him into it, even though I told him the VA wanted him to go to the hospital. Uh, so we got a friend of ours, who is a practicing nurse, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, she's been over there a couple times to see him, and and he liked her. So we got her over there again, same day, Friday, and she says. You need to go to the hospital. I'm calling the, the uh, EM, what the ambulance or the EMTs right now, and you're going to the hospital. She, had all over. yeah. Well, he had a lot of he had sores all over him. Yeah. Yeah, well, oh. they they weren't really bed sores. They weren't really bed sores, but he had sores on the, even on the parts that weren't laying on the bed, his top of his legs and right. arms and stuff. And and uh, anyway, so mm. she, he he didn't argue with her. Here comes the here comes the ambulance and the EMTs and loaded him up and away he went and uh, he had something i don't know what we, what it was called uh huh c diff, c -diff is, the, is the abbreviated thing for what it was he said doctor said two more days you wouldn't you've been you've been dead wow it was some it was some type of a blood a, and intestinal That's infection, infection. Wow. blood and intestines and he has a whole hole in his intestine too by the way nice. and uh yeah and uh and, they, <laughs> and he he said he didn't even know it. He just said he was feeling bad. We could see that he wasn't. I mean, he did have no color in his face, or and uh, and he's a, and he was a heavy smoker too, oh. and uh, very heavy smoker. And uh, so anyway, uh, he went to the hospital and they got him, told him what he had, and got him on these whatever they were giving him to stop this stuff, and and put him on this real soft food practically nothing at all except liquid because they wanted that intestinal thing to heal and uh, so anyway meanwhile i'm calling uh i gave up on the on on on, on the local va and vfw so i called sacramento and, and talked to this lady down there and she sent me forms and he we they were we had them all filled out and he signed them as best he could left-handed because he's a right-handed guy he can right. barely barely write with his left hand but uh Got him all done, sent him back, and uh, I was up there with him yesterday for another phone call from her. We do it in person on my speakerphone. And uh, she says, guess what? You're approved. Yay. It's a miracle. It happens so fast. You would not believe it. Not yeah. only for 100%. Huh? Christian? No, but we're working on it. He's, he's seeing God move in his life. Yeah, yeah we've had uh, Buck and Eddie over there once. They haven't come back yet, but uh, at his house once talking to him, but he doesn't, you don't push this guy at all. You don't even begin to push him because he'll jump right back in your face. He's very independent and, and self-willed, I guess you'd call it. Uh, but you got to go easy and easy. But when I told this lady on the phone after we were getting ready to hang up yesterday, she had all this good news. I said, you know what? I says, uh, I'm the chaplain over here with the VFW and... Uh, because she was at the headquarters of VFW, so I was using that. And uh, I said, plus I'm the service officer, which means you go out and help people. But uh, I said, so I, I said, we're going to say a special prayer for you uh, today, uh, for you and your family, because of all the great help you've been giving to us. And old Al, that's this guy's name, he says, and I'm going to help him with that as best I can. <laughs> I said, yep, we're making progress. Awesome. We're making progress. Awesome. <laughs> so it's been a, it's been a real... 
you know. Normally it would take. Oh, well he had our VSO here in the county. Filed an original claim for him in, on July of 2021. And nothing had happened with it yet. And I was asking her about that. And she says, well, he has to get this special CMP exam. And I says, well, he can't go. He can't get up and go. He can't go to, the, he can't leave to go get an exam. He can't, unless somebody uh, ambulances him down there and ambulances him back and the cost, you know. Yeah. And uh, so she said, well, that's what's holding everything up. But when I started working with, with the VA and the VFW outside of here, Things just started clicking into place just like this. And we got the doctor at the hospital to fill out this aid and assistance form saying what he needed and how bad off he was, and it was done just like that. Praise God. It it's was, an act of God. Yeah, it's he's an, got to see that. Yeah. He has to know. And he's got retroactive pay coming back to July 2021, wow. that first, uh, first application that was... Uh, and he's, uh, his income is going straight up. Anyway, even without the aid and assistance, his income jumped. Just went. <laughs> so he could afford to hire somebody even without the aid and assistance. Yeah. Because he's already been doing it on the income that he has. Yeah. And he's, it's and, been so long. Yeah. So long. And his Social Security won't be affected. He'll still get that. And uh, the guy's going to be, I never seen him so excited and so happy yesterday. <laughs> I mean, and he's got all his color back in his face because everything's working. They say they're going to. Oh. When I went in, when you go in to see him, you had to put booties on and a full gown and oh, mask and everything because it was contagious. Well, they they told him that uh, he tested positive, he tested negative yesterday for the infection. So they're going to take him off this score, this yeah. whatever this thing is he's on where you have to boot up. They're going to take isolation off today or tomorrow. So I didn't get turned away by anybody or get or get a bad attitude from, from anybody that I talk to in any organization. Huh. And I talk to them all. Yeah. And uh, you just you, know, you just got to keep your cool and be nice to them. You, know? I think you were walking in favor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As someone who has done customer service for right. most of my life, yep. that's the important thing. If yeah. you're nice to them, they will bend over backwards. Oh, they sure do. They sure do. And they have. Yeah, so that's my story, and it's, I think it's a, it's a great. I wouldn't say it's an ending. We're still, you know, still, in, it still has to. I still have to keep going over there and visiting. I don't have to, but I do uh, visit him, and because I'm about the only company he gets outside of his brother. Well, you're the only Jesus he gets. I heard something really interesting the other day, and I've been thinking a lot about faith, mm -hmm. and particularly why some people are able to walk their faith out and harvest and some people uh seems like it, it's just a what would you call it a closed heaven or something <laughs> it's like something's not working here it's not firing on all cylinders all right and especially when it comes to something like healing because mm -hmm. when you're dealing with symptoms or pain or different things uh how you know you got to reconcile that in your mind <laughs> as well as with the book uh -huh. obviously the book god's word first reconciling to that making a decision to walk by faith but just thinking about the scope of that what do you do when you're dealing with that because I've, I've been going through uh being healed of renal failure and kidney failure and you know eating dinner and then having pain in your back isn't a fun thing so no i think Brian, I think he could identify with that based on what I've heard. And uh, my wife, too, she's had kidney stone. But nevertheless, uh, I heard something the other day, and it, it struck me in an interesting way. And he was talking about, you know, faith, let, let faith have its perfect work. Mm -hmm. uh, but also it talks about uh, you have need of patience. And I like what I heard about patience. And it was specifically that patience... Uh, is faith over a period of time prolonged faith, prolonged faith exactly mm -hmm. prolonged faith and that's what i wanted to bring up is mm. prolonged faith for instance i believe god for a house and i remember dr price years ago when i went to school of ministry at, uh, in southern california at his church you know he, he i remember him saying uh, you know ask beg be prepared to wait longer <laughs> you know i asked god for a house i had no money for a house at all 
years ago and I asked him for a house with zero money he said thank you father I believe I receive it but faith always has corresponding actions with it uh -huh. uh, probably first and foremost the confession of God's word in agreement with him but after that you're going to have to keep your mouth in agreement with what you asked for. Mm -hmm. Like I asked God for a house, so I started saying, thank you, Lord, for my house. Uh, because thanks and praise and worship is also an act of faith. And when I started doing that, I started going out and looking at houses. I had uh, some realtors take me around and show me houses. They didn't even know I didn't have a penny in my pocket to buy the thing. <laughs> but I was walking by faith because I didn't know how God was going to provide. I knew he'd provide. Yeah. And uh, one day my... Uh, I was talking to my dad on the phone. He's not a Christian, but I was telling him about some houses I was looking at. And he's all, how much money you saved up? <laughs> and uh, since he's not a Christian, I kind of paused for a second. Like, Oops. I, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> and uh, he says, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you a couple grand. And he said, in fact, I'll call your grandpa, see if he'll throw some in. By the end of the week, they gave me $5,000. The next week, my wife got a refund from the IRS for $6,500 she didn't know she had coming. The Lord told me to take all the money and put it into gold. And two months later, it went up another two grand. <laughs> One morning, I was shaving, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, next Wednesday, buy silver. And I went to go. I called up Monix, where I'd been buying the gold from. And I told the gal I wanted to put all the money into silver. We had already, at that point, gotten into escrow with the house. But a long story short, I... Uh, I was telling her about it, and she said, well, Bill, you know, I don't know, silver's gone down all the way, and I'd hate to see you lose your money, because they had a, these uh, accounts where you could stick up like $5,000 uh, and yeah. leverage it against 25000 as long as you put up a deposit, and I was going to put about 13000 and leverage it all, about $50,000 on silver. Whoa. I ended up not doing it, because I pulled back. Uh, she'd said something to me, and it made, I didn't do what the Lord told me when I heard him say that to me about buy silver. Long story short, that night I came home, turned on the news, lead story. Silver shot through the roof today, all time high. And I could have kicked my rear up and down the street and then back again. And I lost over, I lost a lot from not, just from not doing, I think I'd have, I lost about $4,000. In that one day, it would have been $4,000. $4,000 that one day. lose it because you never had it. Sorry. Right, well, the point was I could have had it, but I didn't do it. Because the Lord told me to do it, but I let somebody else word trump what he said. And I've always told people it's a lot like having a, uh, uh, like a teeter-totter. You know, if, if God's words are weighty and heavy, then everything else has to be lighter than that. <laughs> uh, and you got to put God's word as heavy and weightiest above all. Long story short, though, and uh, what I'm saying is, uh, we ultimately, we, we got the money for the down payment on the house. The Lord, I actually started to buy a house over in uh, near Lewiston, and the realtor lady took us back to her office, and she was filling out the paperwork. I told her I want to make an offer on it. She slid the paperwork across the desk to me. I picked up the pin, and immediately my spirit, <laughs> and I put the pin down. I said, ma'am, I'm sorry. You spent a lot of time with us. I said, but God's telling me not to sign that piece of paper. I said, I don't know if that place would burn down around me or what, but <laughs> he says no, I say no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, a week later or so, we found the house that we're living in today and we actually asked God for the exact house we live in. We said we want to live on the end of a cul-de-sac, a street off the end of the street. We want to, I said I want some water on the property. Today we live on the end of a cul-de-sac, yeah. a street off the end of a street. <laughs> uh, got a bunch of water on the property, private line off a of private dam. Uh -huh. But all in all, God, the point is that faith, prolonged faith, for a year and a half I went out and looked at homes and walked by faith until that all manifested but the okay. same thing goes with healing the point is yeah once you believe you've received healing and you've haven't done all the stand stand it's that as uh sharon said prolong prolong faith mm -hmm. and uh, i wanted thought i'd bounce that one out there prolong faith because i think a lot of times it, it you got to set your 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 face as flint <laughs> so to speak when it comes to walking by faith whether it's healing or you're believing God for a car, a house, or anything else. But ask big, you may have to wait a little longer because God may have to rearrange a few things. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless, uh, I've been walking this out with, with healing because I believe by Jesus' stripes we're healed. Right. Well, can you, <clears throat> can you off the top of your head, because I just tried to find it and I didn't. 
Can you give me that verse that said by, show me your works, and I'll show you my faith. And James. By my works? James. Yeah, can you, uh, can you read that for me, someone? Because uh, I think that's an important scripture to apply to, to this particular thing right here. I shared that though because yeah. anybody wants a house, you can have one. I bought my house with no money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were looking, we were looking for a house with no money, God and then money God got the money to us. Yeah. Well, someone finds that they can read that. I'm going to. Uh, Okay. Oh. Um, sure. Uh, it's James 2, beginning at 18. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? Uh -huh. I will show you my faith by my good deeds. Yeah. So, yeah, it's so important to uh, put rubber to the road as they say yeah. it's no good to sit here and say that you like these ideas if you don't put them to work if you don't get out there mm -hmm. and do what you're saying yes yeah. I, I like I like what William was saying I believe it was two weeks ago now but he, he you know that that God has already set things in place for us he's already made those provisions right and and it's up to us <coughs> to work through them I mean the farmer can have faith for his harvest but he's not going to get a harvest if he doesn't go out and plow the field and plant the seed and tend mm -hmm. to the as it grows right so it's important to remember that we have a part in this partnership yeah and and God designed it that way. He didn't have to design it that way. He desired to de design it that way. Yeah. He wanted us to be partners with him because he loves us. Yeah. You know, and so I just uh, wanted to like just remind us again of that, how important that is. Just was going to add, that's why it's called partnership. He does his part, you do our part, we do our part, and it's partnership. Yes, I would add to that. God's part is the grace. He's already provided for us everything we'd ever need our entire life before right. we were ever born. And right. He prepared, you know, like parents prepare a nursery for that baby coming. Uh, but by faith, we take what God has already provided for us. Mm -hmm. We take possession right. of that which grace has already provided. Right. And I like to think of it this way. There is a scripture that says that Jesus uh, says... Uh, the law came by Moses, but through Jesus, but grace but grace and truth grace and came truth. by Jesus. Right. You could you could translate that into Jesus is grace and truth. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's all about Him and His provision, and and yeah. because He loves us, right. we want to we want to receive everything He has for us, every good thing. The scriptures that comes to my mind is no good thing will He withhold to those that walk uprightly. That's yeah. Psalm 84, 11. Yeah. Um, that, that God is a sun and a shield. Right. It starts out with God's a sun and a shield, and no good thing will He withhold from those who walk uprightly and I rejoice in that because God made us righteous so we can say that's true for us mm -hmm. he made us righteous I I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and yeah. my religious bones just about <laughs> cracked <laughs> uh, while I <laughs> while I took that in and meditated on it and let it sink from my head deep into my heart that yeah. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus Amen. and if you are stuck with a religious spirit you cannot say that and the scripture says you cannot uh, cry uh, Abba Father if that that's the testimony right. that you're, you're his child and you really right. have that intimate relationship with me that's why you can call him daddy right. one of the most important things about faith <laughs> is patience yes. because and that's where so many people fail they get impatient and the prayer has not been answered and they give up and they stop and they stop believing. That's a lack of trust in God. And it's a lack of trust too, but they, but it's also a lot to do with patience. Uh, forbearance, they call it as far as uh, the, one of the fruits of the Spirit. Forbearance, patience, same thing. Yeah, 
and uh, yeah, like the scripture says cast not away your confidence which has great recompense and reward mm -hmm. and I was thinking you know the, the whole story about Mary being you know yeah. the, the virgin you know the 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 Greek word for for the word is sperma mm -hmm. and when the Lord came in and the angel came and spoke to Mary and said you know you're gonna have a child <laughs> even though he impregnated her that day it still took nine months right <laughs> and she still had to walk it out too you know yeah. be it unto me and according to your word but that thing still had to grow for nine months <laughs> <laughs> That's right. yeah it just didn't automatically appear and then, here you are boom <laughs> but uh, i use that in light of healing or believing god for something that uh -huh. there's a between yet I, i've actually heard it said this way between between uh amen and there it is <laughs> you're gonna have to stand <laughs> I don't know why this just came to me suddenly yesterday, but you know that scripture in Matthew 7, 7 through 8? Also the same thing in Luke 11, 9 through 10? I'll read the one out of Matthew. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. It says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. He also says knock and keep on knocking. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> it's, it's persistent. I think there's three three things: patience, perseverance, and persistence. The three P's that really uh, just just keep to keep at it and don't give up. Because uh, are you going to stick with it? Are you going to trust me? No matter how long it takes, you know. <laughs> I was just. Uh <clears throat> thinking about that. well especially about what she was saying about that religious spirit thing mm. and and what I saw was was sometimes religion can be like an eggshell and while you're in the egg you know new to Christianity you got this religious shell uh -huh. that protects you as as an embryo until you're ready to hatch and then you break out of the religion Mm -hmm. you know and come well yeah that's otherwise you're stuck in the shell <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> yeah and, and it, well, yeah and unfortunately there's a lot of people who, who never break out of the shell mm -hmm. you know and and so but I just I just happen to see that with yeah it's like they just haven't birthed they haven't come forth to be fully who God created yeah. them to be because they're in this religious shell. I got this picture when you said that right in my head of you know that that juicy stuff that's in the egg that the, that's that's uh, nourishing the, right. the growth. The white, the white. I, I just got this that's that's the milk but if you can never break through the shell you'll never get to the meat. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's <laughs> thought on that. Okay. I have a funny thought on that too. I was I just heard this the other day and I think it's funny but uh, you know an eagle uh, he uh, fell out of the nest and into the, into the chicken yard <laughs> and so he, he you know all the chickens are saying hey you know uh, you know follow us you know and he, the whole time he's an eagle but he's walking around the chicken yard <laughs> oh, yeah and, and then uh, one day he sees this this bird up there soaring around you know with a snake in its mouth you know or something. <laughs> and he's all it's calling to me <laughs> there's no no we're we're chickens we live down here on the ground you know why do you want to fly <laughs> yeah right but then uh, later you know he sees the the, the the bird drops the snake hits a rock kills the snake <laughs> and, and but finally you know as he grows he finally uh, gets his wings <laughs> and, and takes flight but the point is that uh, if you grow up religion being like the chicken yard you know you can get in the chicken yard and scratch around and never learn to fly and you don't know why yeah uh, and god wants us to fly like eagles second i just wanted to kind of back that thing up what i said about milk and meat this is in first corinthians 3 2. and of course this is paul speaking he says brothers i could not address you as spiritual but as worldly mere infants in christ i gave you milk and, s and not solid food for you were not ready for it indeed you are still not ready for it. so the story that that william told um without realizing it is actually the story of how we got the name for our ministry there's uh god gave me illustrated something to me about a little bird who was afraid to leave the nest he would cling to the edge and flap his wings as hard as he could but he wouldn't let go 
And the whole time his father was behind him and finally day after day after trying and giving up and trying and giving up, his father said, son, if you can't let go, you're never going to soar. So the name of our ministry is Let Go and Soar. Our, our brother Fenton, he uh, was driving truck and he was going down the road and here was this eagle that had picked up, it was like a wolf or a fox, something fox. heavy. Yeah, fox. Yeah. Heavy, that it was trying to carry off. Mm -hmm. And it was going right down the road. And if, he, if it mm -hmm. continued to try to hold on to this, he was going to run over it with his truck. I mean, it was, there was no choice. Uh, but the whole point being that at some point that eagle had to decide he's going to have to let go of this burden even though it looked like uh -huh, dinner yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know you got to let go of that even though it's something you think you want to be able to soar like you said but it yeah. was it was it was a great uh prophetic Act that God put out in front of him, uh, and mm -hmm. it was, he said it was that. It just God spoke to him in his heart right there. You know that's that's what it means. You know, when you need you need to sometimes just let go, even though it's a good thing. This this the thing that he had was going to provide sustenance for him possibly, or maybe even for his family. Who knows what the motivation was exactly? Except mm -hmm. it was going to be food, and yet that was not good for him. Right. And and yeah. so it, it was best for him to let it go. <coughs> and we Absolutely. have things that we need to let go to. Oh, yeah. We have a little time left. I wanted to uh, kind of restate the fact that Jesus is always knocking on the door. And uh, he's always waiting for us because he gave us free will. We have free will to make a decision, make a choice to come to him and, uh, and receive the blessings that... Uh, like we all just uh, talked, to, talked about a minute ago, uh, we there. It's just waiting there for us. God has given us all the provision that we need to live this life in uh, in inner and outer prosperity. Yes. Yeah, and I, I I look at they're both very important, but I look at the inner prosperity is so much more important than the outer prosperity, because to be at peace within yourself, and uh, you know you have a roof over your head and you have food on the table things like this that's uh you could call that outer prosperity but it's it's enough but the inner prosperity that gives you contentment and peace with your life however that life is and whatever level that life is that you're living at that's 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 what we really need that's that's what we really need to focus on and uh what what really gives us uh an open heart and open mind open eyes and ears to the lord and uh it's so important and I want to read a scripture out of Revelation 3.20. Those whom I love, I rebuke with discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and I, and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He was talking to the churches right. at that time. Would Linda like to just give a little, you know, expound on that a bit, Linda? Yeah, that uh, he is not willing that any should perish. Mm -hmm. God is not interested in sending anyone to hell. And hell is a real place. The Bible does teach there is a heaven and there is a hell. Mm -hmm. And they're real places. But hell was not made for man. Hell was made for Satan and his demons. That's right. Not for man. That's Never right. intended for man. But God did give us a free will. And he honors that free will all the way to the gates of hell. When God created man, he created him for fellowship with him, himself. And yet because he gave that free will, the Bible teaches in Romans 5, I think it's like verse 12 through 17, 18. It's a paragraph in my Bible, so I can't tell you all of the address, but it starts with Romans 5, 12. It says that by one man's disobedience, sin entered the world. Mm -hmm. And it passed down through the bloodline, through the bloodstream. It passed down to all men all mankind but God is love and he made a way out where there's he made a way of escape where there seemed to be none and that way is Jesus God Jesus is God he actually left the throne of heaven stripped himself of his deity and became a man he is the only one who has had the power to cleanse us of all of our sin this this way God 
made provision for justice. He poured all of his wrath on Jesus' body on the cross. And G Jesus actually became sin for us. Mm -hmm. All of our sin was imputed to Jesus, but then all of his righteousness was imputed to us when we simply believed in him. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and call on him and you will be saved. <clears throat> Pray this prayer. Lord, thank you for making provision for me. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins so that I could be with you forever. And I do repent, which means change my mind. I do change my mind, and I choose you. And by choosing you, I will become part of your family. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for taking care of that. Thank you for this wonderful gift of receiving salvation. And I do that now in Jesus' name. Amen. So that wraps it up for this week, folks. Uh, don't forget, you heard all that. Jesus is knocking on the door. Mm. Let him in. Let him in. You'll never regret it. So we'll see you next week. Have a great uh, week ahead of you. Get ready for the holidays. Yeah.